The animated Snow White is a classic kids movie, but does that hold up in this new century? Disney is planning a live action redo and cast a Latin address actress Rachel Zegler in the lead role. But another well-known actor says, wait a minute, you are forgetting something. Paula Tutman jumps into the latest cultural conversation for us. Paula? Yeah, hi, Karen. So, of course, we're talking about Snow White, and a lot of people know this classic, and people are talking about this one because as big influencers like Walt Disney, they try to diversify and be more inclusive. Think about their suite of princesses from, say, Mulan to Jasmine to Tiana. Also, remember, late last year, Dr. Zeus pulled books, or rather his publisher, pulled books because they were, you know, basically insulting to a lot of cultures. Well, for this one, this is an ongoing dialogue that really asks the question, just because it's a classic, does it mean it's okay? This is how Snow White was depicted in 1937, and since then there have been numerous iterations of the story and the characters. Snow White and the Huntsman is a great example of a change in narrative. Instead of a high-pitched, demure soprano, how do you do? Snow White is featured as an armor-wearing, avenging, bad, shut your mouth. Who are you? Why the queen once you die? You should know you're the one hunting me. It is proof positive that literature, and even the written word, is a living, breathing organism that changes with the times. And change is not bad, and doesn't hurt the classics. According to Dr. Leanne Sandip Wilson, a scholar in children's literature at Husson University in Maine. Literature is written in a time and place by a person in that time and place. But what happens is the story is still a universal story that can be they can be then revisited in another time and place. A flip through the pages of the classics and many movies that depict dwarfs, dwarfism, and little people as mythical, magical, or comical is incredibly painful to Michelle Krauss, who just happens to have dwarfism. When people see people with dwarfism on the street, that's going to be their kind of instinctual association. She's happy the snow is flying on this topic. The people at Disney are very creative. And just like they thought about casting a Latinx actress to play Snow White, I think they can really come up with dwarves being something else or it being, you know, creatively reconstructed to have entertainment appeal but also to be sensitive and appropriate. Disney is a powerful company and for its part put out a statement saying, to avoid reinforcing stereotypes from the original animated film, we are taking a different approach with these seven characters and have been consulting with members of the dwarfism community. We look forward to sharing more as the film heads into production after a lengthy development period. I think it's a good thing that these kinds of things are being moved forward, that people are wrestling with how to bring the modern world into what we've used before, how to see it through new eyes. So, of course, this brouhaha was started by Peter Dinklage, who you may remember starred in the Game of Thrones. He happens to be an actor who has dwarfism, and, and basically he's challenging the notion of whether or not it's okay to keep saying something, even if you know it's not true, Karen. I like what Michelle said, being sensitive and appropriate. It is, it's important to revisit these things, most definitely. Paula, we appreciate it, as always.